can see we got a bunch of sounds here. It's a male vocal, female vocal, sax, bass line, guitar. So I'm just hitting the pads here. So I get an idea what I want to use here in this actual. Okay, let's get busy. Okay, what's up? It's me, Doc, again. How you doing? Thanks again for purchasing another one of our DVDs. This DVD is about the art of sampling. We're going to talk about how to chop the sample up, tune it, put it in the zones, cut the zones up, chop those zones up, put them into programs with their sounds all over the machine, how to pitch change, how to also tune a sample, what time compression really does, how to pitch shift a sample, merging samples together to make your own new sample, and adding effects to samples. These are important things that we've been doing that you've been hearing on the radio, and you want to know how to do it. Well, here, I'm going to teach you how to do it. Here it is. Now you may want to get the beginning of a whole loop. Now in order to loop a sample, you have got to get the exact beginning of a sample. Now most samples will allow you to do this when you go to your start time or the edit point. Here on the MPC, we can move this cursor and move the beginning of it. See the beginning right over here, move right here on this side of our sample? Now I'm hitting the pad in the sample. Let me widen it up here, you can get an idea of what I'm doing. Here I'm right here. I'm just trying to trigger the sample. Now, that's the beginning that I might want to use. I just want one bar. One, two, three, four. This is boop, 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 boop. I know I want to go right to about here. So next, I'll move my cursor to the end point and move everything back right to where I want my sample to be at. See, that's too much. That's one, two, three, four, one. Again, I want a one bar loop. So I'll move the cursor back a little more to get the right size. So I'm going right to that, we call a transient, that little peak and valley, that peak right there I'm going to. Now, one, two, three, four. And I got that one piece I want to get. Now it's important to know where you want your loop to start from. I prefer to start my loops, my most basic loops, from the very beginning of the sample to the section that I actually want to get to. It's very important for me to actually do it that way. It makes it easier for me to understand I'm going to start from the one of the beat. And I can also get the other half if I'd like to and make this a separate sample if I wanted to and have two unique samples. Now, a lot of samples allow the ability to actually loop the sound in this, what we call edit mode. Now, on this machine, we can press loop and turn loop on or off. I can turn it on here in this case. I want to probably take this to the very end. I'll punch a number zero, and I have this section here going. I hold the button down. Put the whole thing through. Now watch this. See a little gap there. See that? That's because I went back to the top right here. See this here? That piece of there is playing also at the same time. So I'm in loop mode here. So I'll turn the beginning back. more. I'm cutting 
I'm going to so go back further and get the beginning. Now, a lot of samples allow you to see even better. The best thing to do is get a window open and you can see the actual waveform. See this here? I can see the waveform itself a lot closer now. I can zoom in or zoom out. What's important for you to see what sample piece you want to get when looking at a sample. Now, a lot of times cats will chop up records and they want to get a kick or a snare from a record or something like that. And what a lot of samplers do, they allow you to have this zoom feature so you can pick the exact piece you want to get from the sample. Now, in this case, I just want to get the, that, that bump on the beginning of that bass drum, which is right there. Now, I'll close the window. Now, a lot of samples also, you can actually move your cursor view. As you can see here, I'm in the two. I'm going to go to the end. The end right there. And I go to open my window. And here we can see the end of the sample. See that? That says the end, and this is the fine look at it. I can go zoom in closer, and now I see what the problem is. I want to go closer to the very end of the sample, right here where it's at, right on that piece right there. And that's looping right. I like that. Close the window, and now I have the exact size of the sample I want. Now, when you get the right part and the exact size you want, I generally want to cut off the beginning and cut off the end if I don't want these pieces here and get the right size of my sample. Now, once I get the right size of the sample, sometimes I may want to keep the rest of this and chop off a piece, like get this boop boop boop, -boop at the end here and use it as a fill somewhere. So what I might do is I may want to take this whole section I like here, which I'll play back again, and use that section alone, but keep the rest of the sample. On the MPCs, you can actually go edit, and we'll say we want to take this section here and make a new section, and give it a new name, which will be Beat 71 in this case. I can press do it, and now we have this sample, as you can see, it's drawing the waveform out, and we got just we want here. We'll play it again. got this exact sample. I've got it here on loop mode as you can see, but that's what I want. I took that sample from the original sample which is beat 70. As you can see here, here's beat 70. I still have this entire sample intact. So now I can use this section or make a copy of this section or make a copy of this little loop piece here and insert it where I want to insert it. It's what we call chopping the beat up. If you want to chop a beat up, that's how we would chop the beat up. We'd find sections we want to get out of this beat. 